It's time now for Keeping It Real with Ollie Gann. Brought to you by Cox Farm Service on Magic 105.5 WMGH. Now, here's your host, Ollie Gann. Music plays such a huge part of so many people's lives. The sound of music is virtually all around us. It certainly has a direct impact in how we listen to it in the car or how it's stored on our phones, iPods, and computers. And many of us follow our favorite musical artists on social media. There certainly is also an indirect component to how we listen to music. It's found in a lot of our movies, which makes up movie soundtracks. Or if we attend a sporting event, there are a lot of musical selections played there. Or if we come to a family barbecue or picnic or gathering of some sort, a lot of times music is played as a form of entertainment. Well, here on Keeping It Real, we play music for the soul. As the overall show does from week to week, we look to encourage, excite, and engage people to the reality of Jesus Christ. I have a special guest on with me here today that's not going to make any exception when it comes to the subject of music. He's a singer-songwriter. His name is Matt Fawcett. He's going to have a lot to say on how music is for the soul, so I greatly encourage you to keep it here to Keeping It Real. Staring up at the stars Making wishes as they fall apart Young and restless, wild and free Hoping we would someday be And looking into your eyes I said for the first time When you say
All right, and this is Keeping It Real. Thank you so much for tuning in to the show here today. I'm your host, Ollie G, and want to remind you all again to feel free to check out all the stuff on my website, www.kirradio.com. And I've got a special guest, singer-songwriter on with me here today, uh, Matt Fawcett. And first time on Keeping It Real, and definitely want to welcome you uh, on the show today, Matt. And if you could share with the listening audience, when did you start? to get so excited about music and how did it start yeah for sure well thanks so much for inviting me on this is a real treat for me i started when i was a young kid there was always music going on in our house i grew up in a christian home we listened to a ton of uh christian radio there was a local station actually in our town that we listened to quite a bit and listened to country radio too and i used to always sit in the back of the car whenever we were driving somewhere and try to guess the lyrics that were going to come up based on the rhyme of the song and was writing poems and my mom and how old were you about that time when you're looking to guess lines oh man i don't even know it was pretty much since i could remember so probably about five or six Um, (laughs) just to give the listening audience an idea of when you know you were a kid how young exactly you were when this is going on you know yeah i oh man i was super young it was funny because i'd get them wrong every once in a while and or i would get when i got them right my dad would look back and be like have you heard this song before (laughs) like i'm just guessing so and that, I mean, after a while, you kind of same songs would come up, and you'd know what you know what the next word would be anyway. But it was always fun for me to try to figure out yeah. where people were going with the story. And I actually heard a song on the radio the other day. Forget which song it was, but in the back of my mind, I'm sitting there like the way this song's going, somebody's going to die by the end of the song. And sure enough, like the last verse or whatever was about somebody passing away, and it came back to like the hook or the main line or whatever. It's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, uh, I guess it would be an amazing thing that, especially you as a singer-songwriter, you just kind of have, would you say you have a knack for these things? You could just kind of pick these things out, like maybe we're the average person who isn't musically inclined like yourself. They may not be able to. Would you say you have a knack for these things? Yeah, it's kind of weird because it is one of those things that I, like, I love digesting songs in the way probably a mathematician enjoys looking at math problems and Mm. the awe and wonder of how things go together yeah which i don't get or understand because my wife does because she's really good at math and was a math major in college right for me i look at math and just say can i grab a calculator please (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) make it as easy as possible but when i look at songs i see a lot of and i I guess even when i look at life there are certain times when somebody will say a line or a phrase and man that would be a perfect bridge or a perfect chorus or a great way to set up a verse and that's how I see a lot of life is through either songs and that need to be written or songs that have been written Mm. Um, Mm. so it is kind of a knack in a way that I just the the glasses that I wear is always somewhat musical related or oriented yeah so then let me ask you this then or what would you say is your biggest thrill or satisfaction that comes with being an actual singer songwriter my I mean the biggest thrill that I have is being able to share music with other people. And I love it when other people get it, too. Like, I spend a lot of time thinking over lyrics and how songs should be set up and how the melody should go and kind of the, the nuts and bolts. And then to be able to share that creation with other people. I mean, anytime you share a, a picture or drawing or something that you've had a handiwork in, you, you feel proud when you're showing it to other people. But when other people get it or can connect with it in a way, that's what really brings me a lot of joy when I can actually share my song with somebody else mm. and allowed to be encouraged, be impacted, think a different way. Right. Um, I actually had the opportunity yesterday to play for our, uh, our encore ministry at church, which is the 55 and older crowd, mm. and uh, I played a song called Trade It All, and for them... It is which, by the way, just to let our listening audience know, we're going to be playing that tune as well as a lot of your tunes here on the yeah. show today. So, But I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Go ahead. You're, <laughs> you're, you're going ahead and you're playing this song for folks, and how did it resonate with them? Yeah, and that's the cool part is because even though I wrote it and I'm a much younger writer than where they are physically at the time, it speaks to a lot of different people and to have them be like, yeah, you know what, like there are things in life that I chose specifically to trade to be able to do something else and looking Mm. back at it like man i wouldn't trade a thing i I wouldn't have gone back and changed that decision whatsoever at all and that to me is kind of like yeah i may have wrote it but at that point in time it takes on a completely different life of its own 
because it's speaking into other people's lives at the point in time. It, for me, it's just cool to experience other people experiencing the same music, but in a completely different way and allowing it to speak into their life that may have a completely different meaning, but in a way that encourages and really builds them up, which is awesome. Right. Well, I tell you what, we got a lot more with you here on the show today. Nothing to hide How could such a normal Get it so right Thought it only had naps to paradise Turns out the stories They're all true Perfectly honest, that's how I found you I read all those pages Almost every day Now I'm trying to live what it says How can I explain this? So simple yet complex with you here on the show today. Definitely want to give you a chance to talk a lot about your music specifically and particular tunes that you have put out there. You have a a song, as you mentioned, Traded It All. But before we even get into that, again, I want to dive back a ways. Again, I want to kind of take a a minute or two to dive back to that kid that you were talking about that was sitting in the back seat of the car and singing lyrics and things. How old were you when you knew you wanted to be a musician? And how did you know that you wanted to do this, that this was going to be such a saturating part of your life? Oh man, I don't know if there was I don't know if there was one specific point that I knew, but God allowed a lot of different things to continue to 
kind of line up or correspond in my life that just is like walking on stepping stone and realizing that like once you take the next step there's another step in front of you like oh this this makes total sense and I, I mean I've always wanted to play and write ever since I was even writing those poems as a little kid or even you know guessing lyrics or whatever being in and around music to me was always just the coolest thing ever so I and honestly like the more I stepped into it the more I played at church every single time I had something to do with music to where I was sharing it with other people there was there was always something Thing that was just tugging at me to say keep going like take the next step whatever it is just just keep walking forward i do remember in college at one point in time i had actually uh, run sound for another band and actually had the entire we had rented the sound system the school had and i just called my dad I was like man i was like there's so much inside of me right now that just wants to take this out on the road like just grab my guitar i'll take the sound system with me and we'll just go <laughs> and and play all over the place and that was kind of the, one of the points to where it was just like yeah like i i just i want to do this and, and a lot of it's just because i want to serve other people um and it's one way that god's gifted me to where i can can serve them some of it because like i do have to work really hard when i song write some songs come e easier than others but it's definitely a craft and a skill that you have to hone in and work on. Yeah, that's something um, I actually wanted to ask you too, is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you talk about how some songs come a little easier than others, does that kind of, as you go through the songwriting process, do you ever think, wow, you know, this is just too hard. Should I consider shutting this down? Or do I, do I just scratch this and go back to the drawing board? Or do you have a tendency to go, you know what, I am just thoroughly convinced that there is a song that's going to come out of this and so you stick with it and you navigate through the hard times when do you what's your evaluation process like as a songwriter yeah so usually like all i write all the time and a lot of times when i'm writing and this may be this is a, i've heard different things from other songwriters too but one of the things that i do when i write is i typically know what section of the song i'm writing for so if I have a lyric or a phrase that comes to mind, usually I know, you know what, that's going to be a great segue from a first verse into a second verse or a great ending line for a chorus or no, that's definitely got to be in a bridge. Mm -hmm. Which, and that may just be the visionary aspect of it, but when I sit down to write, a lot of times it'll start with an idea or a specific lyric or a phrase that I want to build on and around. And I usually flesh it out as far as I possibly can, usually I don't give up on very many songs when I have a thought or idea that needs to get fleshed out. I do have tons of notebooks and tons of notepads that have just literally phrases and things that I go back to quite a bit because I'm not always trying to write an entire song. I'll, if something comes to mind, I write it down real quick. Yeah. Um, and, then some, and then we'll flip back through there and go back to it. But there are some songs that, like, I had one song I had the idea for was When You Say You Love Me. My wife and new daughter had just, like, they were leaving for an hour and they were going to be right back. They were going shopping. So I had an hour and I just, as she was leaving, I was like, man, I've got a great idea for a song. I have to write this down. And I sat down and literally just wrote the thing out. And when it was done, I was like, yeah, I love that song. Like, it's one of my favorite songs to play live, too, because there's just a fun driving beat for it. But that one was an easy one to write, whereas there were others. I think Trade It All had a handful of verses that never made it into it because I couldn't quite figure out exactly what the progression through it I wanted it to be in or what to say, what not to say. Right. And so there's there's been a lot of songs like that, too, to where it's like I had a chorus done. I was like, man, this is great, but I don't know how to support it with the verses, and so it takes a lot longer. And there have been some songs that I've written that literally sat in a notebook for a year or two as just a verse or a phrase. And when I go back to it, if I can, can flesh it out in the moment, I try to as best I can. If I can't, some of it's just realizing, like, you know what, that's just, that's not what I want to focus on today, or right. I, I haven't had anything come up that's really going to help that just yet, so I'll let it be. So then that um, kind of brings, yeah. that kind of brings me then to maybe the meat and potatoes aspect of the songwriter aspect, as far as you're concerned, or as far as you go. You know, you're coming up with these songs, and... You had addressed earlier how, you know, these songs are in part designed to touch the lives of people and to encourage them, you know, grow in Christ or to get them into a, a point of recognizing the reality of Jesus Christ and his presence in our lives. You know, when you're going through writing these songs and you're putting these songs out, you had talked about how 
you get such encouragement from the sense of community that comes from that. Can you maybe share a testimonial of where someone came back to you and said, you know what, that time of worship or when you played that song, that did me over. That did such a number on me or, you know, just expressed an incredible amount of appreciation or gratitude for you in leading that time of worship where God seemingly was working through you in such a way to where people were either being broken or people were being so edified or people were being so warmed with the presence of Christ. Can you maybe give or share an example of that? Yeah, and those happen a lot. And the cool part is I don't even get to see all the times that happens because God allows I mean, his glory to be put on display and a lot of times this school takes me completely out of the picture, which is awesome. Yeah. But even this past weekend, when I was playing for our church event, played the song Traded It All, and it was one that, for a lot of the people in the room, they were towards, they're towards the end of their life, whereas I'm more towards the front end of my life, just age-wise. Mm-hmm. The average age is 85, 90, or whatever, they're, they're a lot closer to the, the end of life than the beginning. Right. And singing Traded It All was one that I actually, there was a man who came up afterwards, the merch table, and just said, you know, I, I remember, because I'd asked him to, with another song, do you remember the first time he said, you love, or I love you to your spouse? And he came up and told me basically his entire life story about how God had, had gripped his life when he was at a camp where he actually, <laughs> he met Christ and his wife in the same weekend, which was really cool to hear that story of just music that I get basically put together in my lab or whatever in in piece of paper and get to share it with other people then all of a sudden bring to life stories of God redeeming people to himself of calling people from the depths of their sin and just basically saying it's time to come home that to me is cool because I I love singing hymns too with that crowd because I sing it from the side of what I think to be true and what I've been told is true and they sing it from the side of, I know 100%, 100% this is true because I've lived it. Wow. Um, awesome. Really awesome. Yeah. If there was, real quickly uh, here, because yeah. we got to go to break, if there was a song that you had to pick from all of the songs that you have pieced together, written, and they are out there for people to get or listen to, which song would you say starts out or or stands out, I should say, stands out as far as the Lord being all over it. That's got to be probably traded at all. Okay. Um, that song was the one that, I mean, there's other songs that are definitely more about who he is. Mm-hmm. But as far as the writing of it and how, essentially the whole song is just about trade. Uh, mm-hmm. One thing for the next, we trade time for influence, money for things. And there are a lot of trades that we make in life that some are fair and some are completely unfair. And depending on what side of that trade you're on, you're going to feel differently about it. All right. And, well, uh, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and play Traded It All here, which actually is title track to uh, one of your albums. And I definitely want to encourage folks out there listening, Google search Matt Fawcett, or you can find him on Twitter. It's, to my understanding, you offer a lot of your music for free too, right? I mean, Yep. Yeah, people yeah, don't even need to pay for it. <laughs> so I definitely want to encourage folks to get onto your stuff and get a hold of your music because it is really good and very impactful. We traded cards when we were kids. Something we had for something we wished. It wasn't always easy letting go But when she shake hands, it's all she wrote I traded it all For a diamond ring No more late nights wondering Who she was or if we'd meet And she said yes when I took one knee I traded it all 
I wouldn't trade a thing Every dream that I traded For this reality Made me a rich man No fortune could ever bring Back for an SUV where I could fit two booster seats, just enough space for the pack and play. Load up the stroller, and we're on our way. I traded it all. Now, I wouldn't trade. Every dream that I traded for this reality made me a rich man. No fortune could I ever bring. I trade.
to now come back to another specific tune because I, uh, I tell you what, I've listened to uh, your stuff. There's a song that you have called In the Gray. And I really, and I love this song and I'm greatly intrigued by it as well. What was, yeah, yeah this, I uh, tell you what, and that's a song we just heard. What was your hope, your prayer with In the Gray? My, my hope, honestly, was to try to get us as believers to to be, in some ways, a little bit more humble in the way we live li- our lives. There are a lot of things that God has told us, black and white, this is what you should do, this is how you follow me. For a lot of believers, that's pretty easy to kind of stay in those guidelines of, who God has called us to be. The problem is there's a lot of things, too, that I believe is kind of in that gray area in life. It's not completely black that we shouldn't do it. It's not completely white that we should. But it's in that gray area in between. And I feel like, especially in my life, there have been times where I have neglected to do something or to act upon something to serve another person Mm. because I wasn't told explicitly I should. You know, in Scripture, we're told we're supposed to take care of widows and the orphans. Right. But what do I do for the guy who just lost his job and he's trying to find another one? Do I really feel compelled to step out of my comfort zone and to reach those people? Or do I sit back and get proud of my position that God has allowed me to have a job and start seeing myself as more prideful or better because I didn't lose my job? Mm. start looking down at other people. And my hope was that as we look around, we start seeing ways we can actually serve other people instead of trying to draw the line on who's right and who's wrong. And mm. a lot of it comes to politics on some level. I really think that what we need to do is to make sure as believers, we're not trying to alienate other people because they have a different belief on how things should go in society. What we should be doing is trying to look for the the greatest common denominator to where we can figure out a way to serve other people and show the love of Christ. That's well put. And would you say that music is a vessel that not only God has gifted you with, I mean, it's pretty obvious if anybody gets a hold of your your music, they'll be able to sense that you're a talented musician. But do you see music as a vessel that God uses to break down some of those barriers that have been put up by man? Yeah, for sure. Music is one of those languages that nobody really, you don't have to know how to speak it in order to be able to appreciate it. Mm. My dad's a great example of that. um, So am I, because I I tell you, I can't sing like you can, and I definitely (laughs) can't play anything, but I love music, so I hear what you're saying. It's echoing in my heart. Yeah, and that's the cool part is because I, like, as someone who creates it, you don't have to be able to create it in order to appreciate it. In order in order to love the English language, you in some ways have to be able to speak it to be able to comprehend it. Music is a way to where you can reach out, even with instrumental music, and allow somebody to feel something inside of them that if you sat there and talked for 20 minutes in a language they didn't understand or they couldn't speak, you, they would have gotten nothing except, well, this person was talking to me and they seemed emphatic about it, but I don't really understand or know. And that's really what I love about why God in Scripture multiple times when there would be something big that would happen to the Israelites or even to Mary after Christ was born, sings. It's how emotions come out and we get to share it with other people. I could say I'm happy and people be like, okay, that makes sense. But for me to be able to grab a guitar and sing a song with a beat and a rhyme scheme that actually evokes that entire emotion out all of a sudden just has so much more life and brilliance and color to it than just saying, yeah, I'm, I'm a happy person, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and that that probably, I think, relates very clearly and well with a lot of people that are listening, because I think people, generally people that listen to music, they listen to it just for, what, a beat or a harmony or something that they can, you know, dance to or move to, or maybe they enjoy the lyrics to something and whether, you know, lyrics are constructive or destructive, you know, but people listen to music for all of these, I guess the way I would describe it, existential or exterior reasons. And the what, what music really ought to do is it ought to be for the soul. And music like yours or music that's in the Christian contemporary market, a good chunk of it, really addresses the soul. 
and it, it, it's yep. designed to encourage us. It's designed to edify us, build us up. Uh, I can't describe how many times, you know, maybe I'm not having the best of days or things don't seem to be working out well or, you know, there's some bad news or heart-wrenching thing that's come my way and then, boom, I'm, tu- I'm turning a tune on in the car and it, like, flips a switch, you know? That's why I really appreciate there are no words to describe my appreciation level, and really I need to probably be appreciating all the more uh, people that do put music out there that has encouraged my heart so often times. I want to get into now Trade It At All, not just yeah. the song, but the album. We've talked a little bit about the song, but the album as a whole, why would you describe that as a must-have for people? Honestly, I think it covers a lot of ground. There's a lot of songs in there that I think can relate to a lot of different people. As far as the album itself, it was one that I'd been working on for a while. That was the first record that I released since college, and it was really a turning point for me in trying to really put my best foot forward Mm. um, as far as getting music out there and trying to speak to people really directly to their heart. Stuff that I put out before in college and when I was writing was really just my own, either writing worship songs or just trying to appease myself or put things out there that I enjoyed. And if anybody else did, or what, like it didn't really matter. But that was the first time where it was like, you know, I want to share these with other people. I want this to be something. And the tagline I use a lot is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the com- comfortable. The goal to really, when people are hurting, to weep with those who weep, to come alongside of them and to share the truth and love but to be willing just to sit there and cry with them. And for people like myself so often to where I'm, you know, living a comfortable life, everything's okay, nothing really wrong has happened, to get those people to kind of kick it in gear and be like, look, just because you're not struggling with something right now or God's allowed you financial blessings or time blessings, things that allow you to have more of a comfortable life, that doesn't allow you to basically put your brain on autopilot, that should be when we should really start seeking out how we can serve other people. And that's that was kind of the crux of that album. There's a lot of, the last song on the album is called Come Back Home, and a lot of that was dealing with my older sister when she was 18 had ran away from our family, and where that was something that completely changed my life because I started looking at things a lot different, to where our perfect family all of a sudden had a rebel and a runaway uh, tagged with it, and she's I love her to death. She's actually turned around, gave her heart to Christ, and has come back to the family. Awesome. Married, actually has a kid on the way now, which is phenomenal. And that's where the song Come Back Home that kind of closes the whole album comes from, is literally no matter where you are, whether you're running from God, never known who he is, or in a situation to where you feel like you're close to him, but not as close as you could be, and it's kind of like the awkward dating relationship type deal. (laughs) Wherever you are, you're never too far away to come back. All right. Well, I tell you what, yeah, we're going to play that song right now, and I want to encourage folks to not go anywhere, because we've got a lot more with Matt Fawcett here. Music for the soul. We've been all about that here today on Keeping It Real. Driving at sunrise, chasing mile marker signs, leaving last night on the side of the road, cruising past street signs, illuminated by headlights, but nowhere. But I'm searching for something that is worth it 
touchdown where I can be free This journey is long name I got one more question for you uh, as we get ready to make the show a wrap here today. Thank you so much for coming in, uh, you know, on the show today. Again, want to encourage folks to check out KIRradio.com and on there is the YouTube channel and everything. In case people haven't listened, had the chance to listen to this show in its entirety, they can get onto it there. Matt, you put out a lot of good music. We've talked a lot about your album, Traded It All. You also have two other albums, I believe, out there as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, correct. so yep. uh, quite, a, quite, a, uh, quite a few songs. I want to get maybe a little bit more personal now. How does your family partner with you or join with you in the joys and the rewards of your music and your music production process? Yeah, that's a phenomenal question. So my immediate family is me, my beautiful wife, Abby, and then our two kids, Ivy, who's two, and then Corin, who's six months. And a lot of it, I will admit, is is the most ridiculous balancing act I've ever been a part of. (laughs) Do you feel like a juggler, one of those jugglers at the circus trying to juggle maybe eight bowling pins at once? Yep, exactly. Because it's one of those things where you can never leave any one thing just sit on the shelf and be like, yeah, I checked on it, you know, it's totally fine. My wife is an awesome helper to me, but we have to have constant conversations of, am I doing too much musically? Do I need to be home more? And and it's constantly balancing. There's some weeks where, you know, I take more time on the weekends to be able to, to go out and do a show or to do more recording. And then there's other weekends where I don't touch it at all. And a lot of that is just the balancing act of she knowing what I need to get done and also what I need to do as far as being just a husband and a dad. Right. And my kids, honestly, like, they're inspiration for a lot of different things. I want to be able to write music that not only would they not be embarrassed to be able to hear, but that they would want to listen to Right. as they grow up. And my daughter loves messing around and making noises and that sort of thing on my computer. And I actually just wrote a song about her. She was running around the living room playing with a balloon. And uh, that, to me, just sparked the image of how much God wants us as his kids just to delight being in his presence. Uh, I wasn't doing anything except literally just sitting in the room, and she was giggling and laughing and showing the balloon off and kicking it around and just having a grand old time. And that to me is like, you know, like that's God allowing my kids 
to teach me a lesson. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Being their dad. Yeah. That, that's that's who we need to be. Is just delighting in who he is. All right. Well, I tell you what, that's well put. Fortunately, that's all the time I think we have for the show. We probably ran a little bit over here, and so to avoid. Uh, them looking to kick me out <laughs> we got to make this show a wrap today but thank you so much for coming on sharing not only info about your music but sharing your heart for music and most importantly your heart for the lord that is really what the essence or what the meat and potatoes is all about concerning your music ministry and definitely uh thank you so much for sharing that on the show here today i uh, certainly hope that you'll be willing to come back and do it again up sometime Oh, for sure. It's my pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot. And again, want to encourage everybody out there to uh, get a hold of Matt Fawcett's music. He's got a website. He's on Twitter. Please get a hold of his music. It will definitely great stuff for your soul. You want to pick the last musical selection here tonight real quick. Oh, man. Let's see. Let's Christ is Sufficient. That's one that I absolutely love and hopefully reminds us all of the truth that it's not Christ plus anything else in this world that matters, but he is sufficient for all that we need. All right. Well, without any further ado, the here is Christ is Sufficient. I want to encourage you to come on back here to Keeping It Real again next week here at Magic 105.5 WMGA Today 30. Also, again, you can listen to any edition of the show anytime at KIRradio.com. God bless you all real good.
taking all my sin and shame so that you will be glorified you've been listening to keeping it real hosted by ollie gan keeping it real is brought to you by cucks farm service Join Ollie G Sunday mornings, 8.30 to 9.30, right here on Magic 105.5 WMGH.